there's a lot of efforts into repurposing drugs um, in the off-label context. And I think that's a very important thing. Um, when a drug is designed, it's designed based on a specific mechanism. And so ivermectin was designed on a mechanism that interferes with the reproduction of specific parasites. And it's very specific to that mechanism. Now, what has happened over the years is, as with pretty well every drug around, including aspirin, um, um, they found that, well, there's other mechanisms that this drug also affects that, that are involved in certain cancers. Let's see if it works against certain cancers. And so um, a bunch of researchers have looked into this as tons and tons of research on ivermectin and cancer. Um, and what the conclusion is, is that it targets a pathway called PAK1, PAK1, protein activated kinase number one. This is a common um, pathway in certain cancers. And this drug does have some effect on reducing that pathway in these cancers. Does that mean it's gonna affect the cancers? Does that mean it's gonna cure the cancers? Let me just show you what we understand. And this is from 1972. This is the <laughs> metabolic pathways in living human cells. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, this is just part one. There's actually many different charts here. Um, but these oh are the biological goodness. pathways involved. So oh if we were to focus on PAC1, let's type in that, PAC1. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on these pathways. And so you can see, um, oh we know we know everything. Well, we know a lot about human molecular signaling. Each one of these pathways exchanges um, different parts of molecules. And we need to know everything about that, how one molecule gets converted to another how it gets built up in the cell, how it gets broken down, and how this process is done in every single cell in the body because it's different. Mm. Okay, so what we know is, is fairly intense. Um, and that's why we're able to design drugs uh, in the way we do now in this day and age. Um, so you can see there's just so many different pathways, so many different molecules involved here. Um, so when you look at a particular drug and its benefit, um, how many pathways are involved in a certain person's cancer? Probably many. Mm -hmm. And they're going to change over time. And so if you take a drug that simply targets PAC-1 in a very weak manner, there's other drugs that have much better targeting of PAC-1, um, then you're really not going to have a huge impact on the cancer. And that's the problem is when you when you take these drugs out of context, um, you run into a real lack of credibility when you look at the deep molecular levels. And so does ivermectin um, affect people with cancer? Well, if that person has an incredibly high level of PAC-1 and there's no other alterations um, in that particular person's cancer, then it's going to have some effect. But why not just take a drug that's actually designed to target PAC-1? It is not going to have the effects because in order to fully re uh, repress PAC-1 uh, using ivermectin, you have to use it at a very high dose and there's going to be a lot of side effects with that. So, um, you know, we've got enough, enough data and enough targets to focus on. Okay. And that's kind of where things are at. Right. Is, is we need to look at the context of everything. This is just one of the studies, uh, one okay. of the recent studies. Um, you can see the pathway here, PAC-1. Okay. Um, now, as you see, this looks very different from the previous chart I showed you. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty limited. Okay. So yeah, that's the issue there. Um, right, they might not be considering all the other yeah. interplay. Now, you know, one of the things about ivermectin is it did win the Nobel Prize or the creator of ivermectin did, because um, parasites are a huge problem in many tropical mm -hmm. countries, and they can cause cancers, um, and mm -hmm. they can, um, you know, they kill people all the time. So mm -hmm. um, this is the other molecules that are similar to ivermectin. There's avermectin, uh, doramectin, um, selamectin. So there's many other ones that are being looked at, too. Um, yeah, so... So these are studies where they looked at ivermectin in different types of cancers. Mm -hmm. 
um, digestive tract cancers. And this is just from 2021. There's still been, there's been a lot of other research since then. Um, yeah. So, uh, and it looks like just from your super quick scan there, I'd love to have that uh, that thing. Can you send me the link, please, or put it in the chat? Oh, which uh, one? The um, the Roche Biotech. This paper you're sharing now, and yeah. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah one yeah. second here. Um, it's because, an older one. There's there's newer ones. Um, well, it's 2021. That's, yeah. Uh, and it looks like it's for us. <laughs> it's true, but it looks like they looked at quite a few cancers. Yeah. Um. And, so that would be a helpful one for us to have for mm -hmm. sure. Thank you. And here's another mechanism of ivermectin, um, reactive oxygen species. But, you know, once again, you've got these little cartoon maps that talk about these pathways when in reality, this pathway's got a lot of molecules involved in it, a lot of steps that can go wrong. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, uh, people always, uh, literally everyone I've spoken to with cancer has tried ivermectin. Has it made a difference in the cancer? Probably not. Um, and that's because there's, there's literally impossible to have a cancer that's that's only driven by one molecular pathway. Um, mm -hmm. There are certain cancers that are um, <clears throat> driven by a certain molecular feature, but it usually spreads out to many pathways. Okay. So um, these are, this is a summary of the different molecular mechanisms it has. So, for example, in breast and colorectal cancer, it has the potential to inhibit the Wnt pathway. Um, the Wnt pathway is like uh, fairly redundant. So you have to understand that cancers and biological life is what we call functionally redundant. So it's like an airplane. If one computer goes, they have a backup computer. And if that computer goes, they have another backup computer. Um, because you don't want all of your computers going in an airplane when you're, you know, 20,000, 30,000 feet up in the air. So life is the same way. Um, the Wnt pathway has many different redundant pathways around it. So just just repressing the Wnt pathway by itself is not going to do much. Um, uh, then these are some of the other pathways it inhibits. Um, but let's let's do something like here. Let me just uh, get you another one that probably has more data. So here's something that actually has better better data. Um, and definitely has a more proven effect on cancers than um, ivermectin. You might have heard of it. It's a compound that not too many people like. It's called broccoli. Have you heard of broccoli? No. It's a vegetable. <laughs> oh, broccoli? Broccoli. <laughs> I eat broccoli. <laughs> okay, there you go. I well, it's going to have more of an anti-cancer. Yeah, it's going to have it. more of a cancer anti-cancer effect on you than ivermectin. Put it that way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'll show you here. It um it has compounds called SFNs. Um, this is just what broccoli looks like. I'm sure you know the broccoli yeah. family. Okay. Uh, this is okay. all the data on it. Uh, literature search. Here's here's how it works. These are different cell lines. MCF7 is a breast cancer cell line. Um, and you can see they're actually including the amount that you need um, of this uh, SFN on uh, studies, um, what it did, how it worked, inhibited cell proliferation, decreased cell growth. I mean, already we're getting results that are better than ivermectin here. Look at all the genes it regulates. Wow. Not just PAC1. Okay, look at all these. Hmm. All these are different genes. So once again, um, you know, when you're looking at these things, and this is in mice, so we actually have studies in mice where it showed some, some benefits. How much of a benefit is it? Is it gonna cure your cancer? No. Is it gonna slow it down? Yes, probably, in some hmm. cases, not every case. It really depends on whether broccoli is targeting that pathway. Now, literally every one of these cruciferous vegetables, fresh fruits, berries, um, have multiple pathways in inhibiting cancers. In fact, when I was doing my graduate studies, um, what I was looking at was the control region of a gene called P10. And P10 is a gene that is involved in many cancers. It gets turned off. It's a tumor suppressor gene. And so normally it's turned on. And if it sees, uh, if, if there's a cancer cell that's rapidly reproducing, it will detect that and turn that cell off. So it's kind of like a fail-safe mechanism. 
Um, and uh, it's supposed to be turned on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, but often it gets turned off in cancers. And that's one of the ways cancers grow is they turn this gene off, this P10 gene. Uh, when I was looking at the control system that turns the gene on and off, it's called the promoter region. I noticed that there were binding sites on the DNA for all these different plant phytochemicals like uh, resveratrol from grape skins, curcumin from turmeric, um, EGCG um, from green tea, um, mm -hmm. and quercetin, um, which is from apple skins. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that these natural ingredients are actually modulating genes that are involved in cancer growth. And this is why the studies have shown time and time and time again over the years that highly processed diet of McDonald's and other foods like that is going to cause you to have cancers much at a much earlier age and more aggressive cancers. And a healthy diet that is mostly vegetable based, seeds, nuts, fruits, uh, sort of Mediterranean is going to actually slow down cancer growth mm. and will you know, potentially prevent cancers, but also slow down those cancers when you have them. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So isolating ivermectin when there's so many natural compounds that have great benefits. I could show you, I could go on here and show you just about every one of the vegetables and how it benefits you in some way against cancer. There's going to be studies on it. So focusing on ivermectin is really just kind of, um, it's a group of people that really don't understand molecular biology or cancer.